you're going to have to get pressure to that. And it's, it's not hard to do. You may, may but you, you, if, if an, cause an IVC I think is only a thousand liters. Yeah. So you're going to need more, you, you'll a thousand liters. If you were, if you had all this irrigated, you're that, that would go really quickly. There, there's really, I don't know them off by heart, but I've, I've, I've looked at this before cause I've done these measurements before where you can calculate, okay, based on the irrigation you're using, whether it's drip or overhead, you'll get a gallons per minute for whatever that sprinkler is. So if it's drip, they'll say it's like one gallon a minute per drip emitter. And then, and then, and it depends on the product you have. It might be half gallon a minute or whatever, gal or gallon per hour, whatever the metric is, you'll just total it up. Okay, so if, and, and it, because these beds are uniquely shaped, uh, which is which is fine. But if you were to do this on drip, which probably makes more sense because then you don't need as much pressure to water it, and then you'll conserve that water. But you basically, when you lay your drip out, you're just going to have a number of how many emitters there are for each of those beds, and then you're just doing a calculation as to this many emitters are here. They give out one a half gallon per hour. Multiply that by all the emitters and then you're going to find out pretty quickly how much water you're going to need per hour to water that much square footage and so once you figure that out then you'll be able to um figure out how much water capacity you're going to need up the chain in order to water that garden day in and day out mm -hmm. so how do you pressurize the tank do you need um a like kind of pump and, and electricity yeah and and it's probably not even a pressurized tank it, it, it sometimes it just depends on what your energy is and how um like so for people that are off grid like my new place i have pressure tanks because i only want to use electricity at once to pump the tank full of to get 80 psi and then it's passive until that pressure goes down to like 50 PSI and then the pump kicks on and charges it again. But most, and that, that's, that's a common thing for like domestic water, but for, for, for farm irrigation water on a pump, usually there's a pump that just kicks on when you want to turn on the water and it just pumps. And so it's going to run for the whole time that you're, you're irrigating. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that, um, if there, there's got to be like an irrigation supply store or something like that in your area. Yeah, into it before, yeah. Um, yeah, like they'll, they'll have that information for you. Basically, just you go down there, and uh, you tell them what you've got and and how you how you're thinking about laying it out. They'll have all kinds of advice for you there, and they'll help you set up a system. Okay. Yeah. But basically, yeah, you just need to decide how you can do it because I I would say you know. That's definitely a scalability problem, hand, hand watering. Definitely. <laughs> you know? Unless you yeah. want to be real agrarians and you're spending, you know, 10 hours a week hand watering your garden. Yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> yeah.